right, what's up guys? So today in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a rock crusher for really cheap, really fast, and without needing to weld anything. This is a no weld rock crusher that can turn rocks that are about this size, about an inch in size, down to this in like five seconds. Um, because I wanted to buy one of these online, they're really expensive. The cheapest one I could find was about 200 US dollars plus another 50 US shipping. And for a Canuck like me, that ends up being like a 350 Canadian dollars. Um, I figured I could probably build one of my own for a lot cheaper than that. I think the total cost on this for me was probably 40 bucks Canadian at most. And that's only because the housing piece that I bought uh, was like a $24 kitchen pot, because that's all I could find that was the right dimensions. But uh, if you can find something like this at a thrift store for like four or five bucks, the total cost on this is probably going to be between twenty and thirty dollars, which is pretty cheap. Uh, certainly a lot cheaper than the three hundred fifty Canadian it was going to cost me to order one online. So I should just jump in here and say uh, did I, did it actually cost me a little bit more than that because I decided to actually line the inside of the mill with some replaceable steel plates. Uh, so that probably added an extra twenty dollars in cost, but I'll go over the materials and the detailed cost list at the end of the video. Alrighty, so first things first, the tools you're going to need to build this crusher. Number one, you're going to need an angle grinder. Uh, I got this one on sale at Canadian Tire for like 30 bucks Canadian. Uh, try to get one that has a 5 8 inch bolt coming out here, which I think is the most common, uh, particularly on the smaller models. I mean, this is just a cheapo. It's only like 5.5 or 6 amps, something like that, but it does the trick. You're also going to need both cutting discs and grinding discs for... Um, the angle grinder because you're going to use this both for uh, cutting up some of the metal to make the components but it's also going to be the motor that powers your crusher. Next you're going to need a drill for drilling some holes in both the wood and the steel. These here are step drill bits. I recommend getting a set of these especially if you can find them on sale because otherwise they're pretty expensive um, but they're for drilling holes in metal and uh, they're really once you get a pilot hole going you stick these in here uh, and they have little I don't know if you can see on there very well, but they have uh, the markings on here for each size. There you go, 5 16 3 8 etc. Um, so you need a set of those. You need some clamps to hold down your equipment. Exacto knife for doing a bit of cutting. And I recommend getting some of this JB Weld stuff um, because this is a no weld solution. So we're going to build this crusher without having to weld at all. Um, for making a couple pieces of metal stick together. Uh, I recommend maybe getting some of that because it's pretty good. So that is all you really need for tools. Of course, some safety gear, some goggles, and some gloves are helpful. Uh, as for actual materials, you need to get yourself some heavy-duty chain. This is what's actually going to be doing the crushing and beating on the rocks. This is 3 8 inch uh, grade 43. It's sort of the biggest and highest quality I could find at my local Lowe's store. Uh, they sell it in the, by the foot. This was, I think, $6.50 a foot. Um, so get yourself a foot of this. It's going to be used to make the crushing links, and if you have a whole foot of it, then you're going to have some extras too, because these are the components that are going to wear out the fastest. So, get yourself some of those. You're going to need a 5 8 inch bolt. Um, this is the head of the bolt that I cut off, uh, and you want it to be 2 inches long. Uh, it's got to be the same thread as the thread on your um, bolt right here, because it's going to attach onto this. So get yourself a 2 inch long 5 8 inch bolt. You're also going to need what's called a coupling nut. This is half of my coupling nut. The other half is, is kind of on there, like that. So they're also about 2 inches long. And uh, it's also going to be 5 8 inch, because that's going to thread onto your bolt and onto your um, angle grinder right there. So you're going to get one of those, and you're going to roughly cut it in half. Then you're going to need a fender washer. It's called a fender washer because it's really wide. This is two inches wide. You're going to need one with a hole that's five eighths inch so your bolt can pass through it. I could not find one at my local hardware store that had a five eighths inch hole. This is only about a half inch. Um, so I just used my uh, step bits to bore out the hole a little bigger so it fits. And you're going to need a 5 8 inch nylon lock nut for the end here. And that's what you're going to use to build the actual crushing piece. This will screw on to your ankle grinder here. And this is what's going to spin around and break up your rocks. So you need some of that. 
All these components are pretty cheap and you should be able to get them at your local hardware store. I think the coupling nut was the most expensive. It was maybe like three or four bucks. A uh, foot of chain is going to cost you about six and a half bucks. Lock nut, maybe a buck or two. The washer is, you know, 50 cents or whatever. Bolt, maybe a buck or two. Uh, and that's it. That's all you need to build the actual crushing component. Uh, you're going to need to get some, this is quarter inch threaded bar. And this is what we're going to use to actually kind of screw all of our crusher housing together. Um, this comes in like a three foot piece, I think, or a two foot piece. And then you're going to cut it down to a bunch of smaller pieces, which you can see sticking off my the sides of my crusher here. Um, so it's quarter inch threaded bar. I think this was like three and a half dollars for like a three foot long piece of Canadian tire. So pretty cheap. You're going to need a bit of plywood. Uh, this is just some half inch scrap pieces I had lying around. Uh, make sure it's at least half an inch thick. Uh, three quarters is okay, five eighths is okay. Uh, any thinner than that and it starts to get a little flexible and you want something that's nice and stiff. It doesn't have to be plywood, it could just be you know any odd wood, but at least half inch thick. You're going to need two pieces of that, roughly about six and a half by six and a half inches. You're going to need a baking sheet. I just picked this up used at a thrift store for three bucks. This is what you're going to cut your end piece from to basically put the lid on your crusher. Which will look like this. And this is also about six and a half by six and a half inches. You're going to need something to prevent the dust from sneaking out the sides. So I just used a chamois cloth uh, that we had in the house that I cut to fit on here and I glued it on with some Gorilla Glue. I recommend something like that or a big rubber gasket or make your own rubber gasket. Um, even some silicone would be okay. And then the hardest component to find was actually this. So to actually make the six inch housing uh, for the crusher, I recommend six inches because that's what will fit this design. I'll show you the details of this later. It needs something that's about six inches internal diameter. Uh, ideally, you'd have just like a piece of, of six inch steel pipe that had like quarter inch thick walls or eighth inch thick walls. Um, this is pretty thin. It was actually just like a pot. You can see that I got from Canadian Tire. Basically, you want something six inches internal diameter and you're going to want to cut it down to about two and a half inches deep, which is what I've done here. So when you buy it, just make sure, take your measuring tape with you, it's gotta be at least two and a half inches deep. And you also want the sides to be perpendicular. You don't want a pot that like flares out the sides or something that kind of bells out like that. Um, try going to your thrift store when you're looking for your baking sheet. Uh, I went to a couple thrift stores and I just could not find one that was the depth that I needed, the diameter that I needed, and also like straight walls. So uh, I had to buy something new, unfortunately. This was like maybe 23 bucks. By far the most expensive piece. Uh, hopefully it doesn't wear out too quickly. Uh, you're also going to need some quarter inch wing nuts. These are going to be to actually seal your lid down. You're going to need a couple of quarter inch lock nuts, four of them. That'll go on the back end of the crusher. To attach the crusher to the actual angle grinder, I suggest getting a couple of these little angle brackets. I think they're like an inch and a half or so. Um, You'll just have to find out what fits because each angle grinder is going to be a little different, I think. Uh, you're going to need two short bolts. These are 5 16 inch because that is the size of the threaded holes I have on the side of my angle grinder, which are usually for screwing in the handle, but we're going to use them to screw on. You can see the other side there, our crusher. So two bolts, two nuts uh, that are 5 16 or whatever size your hole is, and uh, two brackets. I got lucky and these brackets are just the right size for the plywood size that I have and the angle grinder size that I have that I was actually able to use the existing holes. Um, otherwise you might have to use your step bits and your drill to drill in some new holes that line up perfectly um, with the holes in your angle grinder. So I think that's it for materials. Oh, you're also going to need on the back side of your crusher housing, I kind of have my own home built washer here. This is one um, rubber washer and two three quarter inch steel washers. And I've used the JB weld to glue them all together. And what that is gonna do is that is gonna make sure that my crusher sits on the back of the angle grinder here and has enough free room, not only for the 5 8 bolt here, but also this part of the bolt that's a little wider um, that also spins and that's about three quarter inch. And so that is gonna pass in here without actually rubbing on the outside so the actual total height that you need is going to depend on you know this size and depth of the bolt of your angle grinder and also the um, like thickness 
of the bottom of your pot or whatever it is you use. You just want to make sure that this clears and isn't rubbing on anything and that when you screw down this guy on here, you can screw it down all the way without actually rubbing on your crusher housing. So um, for me, the perfect size was two three quarter inch metal washers and one rubber washer. I had actually cut this out with an X-Acto knife because I couldn't find one that was the perfect size. Um, and that gave me uh, just enough height that this will sit on the angle grinder, um, but without this rubbing in here. So that's all you need for materials. Okay, so for actually building the, uh, the crushing unit that goes on the inside, I had to take my uh, 5 8 inch bolt, I had to cut the head off, and then I had to measure the distance that I was going to need to fill this piece of my coupling nut that I cut off here. So I cut it in half, I screwed it all the way down, and then I took my bolt and I screwed that into the coupling nut. So you do something like this. And then you'd see in there how much thread you have left. You want to be able to fill that thread with your 5 8 bolt, 5 8 inch bolt, plus have enough room for your fender washer and have enough room for your lock nut with just a little bit sticking out here. Um, you don't want it sticking out too far because then you have to make your crusher wider. Otherwise, it's going to rub on the lid when you put the lid on. And I also recommend using your angle grinder to just cut uh, a smooth line in each end of the bolt because uh, that will allow you to put a screwdriver in there uh, if you ever have trouble taking this apart and disassembling it. Um, for the fender washer, got to bore out the center hole so it fits your bolt if you can't find one that's the right size. And then on either side of that hole here, you're going to want to drill another hole that's 3 8 inch to accept your piece of chain. And you want those to be directly across from each other because if they're not directly across from each other, uh, the weight distribution is going to be uneven and that'll cause your crusher to vibrate. So you can see that's what I've done here. Put a hole in there and a hole in there. Now on your chain lengths, once you free up some chain lengths, you're going to have to burn a couple pieces like this, cut them right out uh, in order to free up some whole chain lengths that are undamaged. You're just going to use your uh, cutting disc to make a single cut in there, just wide enough to pass through um, the washer here. That way I can easily slip these on and off, but they won't come off during operation. And even um, rotate them if I wanted to. So if the side that was taking the beating uh, was wearing down fast and this side was good, I could flip it around or I could even put this side down in here and the good side down here up top. Um, so I get the maximum life out of my chain. You can see I only ran a couple of rocks in here, but it's already starting to get a little pitted at the top. So pretty easy to build. You do need to be able to cut, so you need your angle grinder for that. Getting stuck, because what you want is you want freedom of these chain lengths so that when they hit a rock that doesn't break, the chain link can bend backwards like this and the rock can pass by without getting jammed between the chain link and the wall because you're going to want to manually crush any rocks that are too big to pass through the gap right here. So when the chain link is all the way folded back, you got to make sure that the rocks can still pass through here otherwise you end up with a rock jam and you'll ruin your motor. So. That's pretty much it. You have to drill out a 5 8 hole at least uh, in here so your angle grinder bolt freely spins. You have to drill your quarter inch holes in your pieces of wood to pass through the quarter inch threaded bolt. And you're going to need to drill those holes in your plate as well. I just used some Gorilla Glue around a circle here and glued on this the chamois stuff here to be my um, sort of dust seal to keep all the crushed rock inside. And really that's about it. It was a pretty easy build. Just make sure if you're gonna use this uh, JB Weld stuff at all that you give it like at least 15 hours to set before you actually put the thing in, a, in, in work. And that's it. So I will uh, I'll screw it all together and I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll crush some rocks. But right now it's designed as a batch crusher. So that means that I have to take it all apart, open the lid, put in a small batch of rocks, close it up, run it, crush it, open it back up again to dump out the fines, put in more rocks, etc. And not only is that time consuming, but I think having all the rocks in there before the motor starts running 
uh, is not very good for the motor because it has to kickstart all those rocks around while they're all still really large. So what I wanted to do today is convert it from a batch rock crusher to a continuous rock crusher. So to do that, I need two things. I need an inlet port to put in fresh rocks, and I need an outlet port for the fines to fall out. So I went to the hardware store yesterday and I picked up some one and a quarter inch PVC, uh, 90 degree angles. One is just a standard one, the other is, I think it's called like a street elbow, because it has a, a tapered sort of male at one side versus two females, like the standard one does. That way I can put them together real easily. Uh, I'm not planning on gluing these together. I'll just uh, leave them sort of finger tight like that. And when you have an inlet port for a rock crusher like this, you always want to make sure you have at least two angles um, in the input line. That'll just make sure that any rocks flying around won't come flying out at full speed and hit anybody in the face. So I think I'm going to set mine up kind of offset like this. I'll put it somewhere up near the top here, sort of at that angle, and that way I can feed rocks in. Um, I went with one and a quarter inch because uh, if you remember from my first video on how I built this, uh, any rocks that are much larger than one inch in diameter are going to be at risk of jamming. They'll get caught between the chain, even when the chain is fully bent back, and the outer wall of the crusher. Uh, and if it rock jams like that, then it's going to be bad for my motor. So I'm uh, this way I can kind of restrict myself to the largest size I can put in here. Because if a rock is jammed in here, it's pretty easy to open it up and take out, uh, comparing to when it jams in the crusher. So restrict yourself by just having a smaller input input pipe. For the outlet, I went with an inch and a half, and it's one of those sort of street elbows as well. It's got a tapered, uh, one end is tapered, so that will be somewhere near the bottom. So I'll have to cut a hole in the wood and cut a hole in the steel plate I have um, for the top part, and for the bottom one I'll cut a hole in the wood, and then I think I'll just drill uh, really small holes uh, in the plate to act as like a screen. Uh, I thought about cutting it out and just putting in some screen mesh like from an old kitchen sifter. Um, but with rocks whizzing around, I, I think that's going to wear holes in it pretty quickly. So I'm going to see what drill bits I have and I'll just drill maybe some sort of one to two millimeter sized holes in the area that will fit in here. And then I'll just drill a hole in the wood and, and match this up and the fines will drop out. Uh, okay, so just working on the new um, continuous crusher here, uh, making a new end plate for it so I can feed some rocks in the top here and have the crushed material come out the bottom here and uh, so I've just kind of jammed these in here for now I'm gonna have to kind of glue them in and seal up the uh, air on the uh, holes and stuff around the outside here this is gonna be the metal plate that goes on the inside and faces the actual crusher so this is where the rocks are gonna fall in and I punched a bunch of holes in here kind of to make it like a screen so hopefully the powderized material comes out of there, or at least some of it does. Uh, I'm still anticipating to have to open it up every once in a while to pick out the little bits that aren't breaking, but that's going to slide in back there. We'll call that good. So now that I've been running with the uh, continuous end plate, where I keep charging in material in the top and letting the crushed material come out the bottom, one thing that's happening is that since the material is getting fed from the side here, it's always impacting one side of the chain first. So you can see if I can zoom in here, you can see that this edge here was wearing away a lot faster than this edge. And the result of that is this. It actually broke right out of the ring that attached them. And you can see the one that's still on here is starting to twist out of place as well. And that's because a lot more force it's being applied to this side of the chain because this is the side that impacts the full pieces of rock when they first enter the chain mill. So going to have to do two things today. One is obviously replace this piece here. Um, what I'm going to do is actually make two of them uh, so it's twice as thick and hopefully it'll last a lot longer. I'm also going to have to flip the chains around um, so that they start wearing on the other side or maybe I'll switch them so they start wearing at the, at the untouched end up here for now. Actually, the other thing I'll have to do is, looking at the inside of my mill, which is now getting a little deformed, we can see that in one side, it's taking a lot more of a beating 
than in the other. And that's because over here is what, closer to where the inlet was. So fresh rocks were coming in about here, then getting hit right away on this side. Now I could just rotate it and let it beat on some other edge, but because the metal is so thin, I've decided to actually um, build a liner for it out of a 1 8 inch thick steel. So this will basically be the shell and most crushing chambers, crushers or, or mills of various kinds, whether it's a ball mill or an impact mill, um, they typically have a shell and they have a wearable liner and that wearable liner is replaceable. So what I'm gonna do for this is basically build a replaceable wearable liner that'll get bolted onto the inside. Um, because you can see here, if I keep going uh, pretty soon, I'm gonna have rocks flying through uh, to the other side. So I will uh, work on both of those things today and then I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, so here what I'm doing is uh, I went out and bought some three quarter inch wide by one eighth inch thick uh, steel flat bar. It came in a three foot piece. And I'm just gonna cut this down into uh, two inch long pieces. Uh, and those are the pieces that I'm going to bolt onto the inside of the mill. Uh, I should add that uh, I would recommend maybe getting something that is one inch wide instead of three quarter inch wide, uh, just so you don't have to cut as many pieces. Uh, and especially so you don't have to drill as many holes because the drilling holes takes, takes quite a long time. All right, so next up, once you got your pile of uh, two inch plates there, again, this is a three quarter inch wide by one eighth inch thick. You're gonna need to drill some holes. Those holes need to fit your little metal screws. They're gonna use to bolt it on to the shell of the mill. So I think these are 1032 screws. So I found that the 3 16 inch bit works just right. And that will fit just perfectly in there like that. All right, I suggest you get a drill bit that's specifically meant for steel and heavy steel. Those drill bits that say they're good for steel and wood and plastic and yada yada uh, aren't gonna last very long uh, if you're drilling through a bunch of this stuff. So um, makes sense to spend a couple of bucks and get a drill bit. That is the best for the job. Otherwise it will take you forever. All right, so I cut off, cut out my original uh, center disc that held onto the chains. Uh, you can see the chain burst right out of it on one side and the other side I just cut it out. Uh, and that's because the material is being fed on one side and causing the chain to twist. So built myself a new one and this time I'm going with two washers. Uh, I also went ahead and flipped the chains around. You can see they've been wearing on one side a lot more than the other. So now they'll have a chance to wear on this side. Uh, eventually I'll flip them around completely like this. And then they can wear on this clean edge here next. And then in here, I've gone ahead and started with my wear plates for the inside of the chain mill. Uh, I've only done 10 plates so far. Um, my drill bits are getting pretty weak and they're having trouble drilling through this 1 8 inch steel. So I've covered up the area that was worn out from last time and so I'll just position this for now so that the material enters around here and gets swung against here first. Uh, and so this will take the majority of the beating inside the mill. Uh, and at a later time, once I get some new drill bits, I'll probably um, cover the rest of it over here as well. But I'm gonna take this inside and uh, screw all these down and then it'll be ready to put back together and uh, go back to work. All right, I've got it all put back together and ready to go. You can see I bolted in all of my steel wear plates. Uh, I've only managed to cover about half of it, but the rocks enter about here and it spins in this direction. So the full size one inch rocks are gonna impact around here first. Uh, and then by the time they make it over here, they should be pretty small. Uh, that's why previously we didn't have a whole lot of wear on this part of the mill. Most of it was out over here where the plates are. So I'm gonna get the lid put on and then we're gonna crush some rocks. So what I've been doing is just uh, packing my material, this sort of size stuff in here. And then once that's about full up to the top, I cover it up, turn it on, and the vibration kind of rattles it all down slowly into the crushing chamber. And then it comes out the bottom here. A little bit. It's uh, pretty fine stuff. Unfortunately, it does just make a lot of dust, but I could probably get a lid for this so that this goes right down into a sealed chamber and then I wouldn't have to worry about the dust so much. But uh, anyway, I'll fill this thing up and then I'll show you how it works. So 
So you can probably see there's no bolt sticking out the side of the mill. Uh, that's because I did this test run prior to uh, deciding to make those uh, little steel plates to put on the inside as a replaceable liner. So these are uh, just an example of some of the rocks that I've been crushing up in this crusher. Uh, these are from an old uh, gold and silver mine. You can see they're pretty rusty quartz with the pyrite in there. So uh, first thing I got to do is squash them up by hand with a, uh, with a small sledgehammer. Uh, that's just to get them down to about uh, one inch minus. Um, so that way I can feed it into the mill. Uh, and then after grinding it up in the mill, uh, what I'll do typically is uh, sieve it through a uh, 30 mesh and a 60 mesh sieve. And that way I can sort of pan down the, the different size fractions and um, what I found, at least for the, for the one or two samples that I've put through the mill so far, is that I end up with about 50% uh, of the weight of the material uh, passes uh, the 60 mesh screen, so that's 60 mesh minus. Uh, and then about another 25% sits on the 60 mesh screen but passes the 30 mesh and then the other 25% is sort of a, a coarser sand uh, that's a sort of plus 30 mesh here. So uh, here's a picture of the, the final mill. Um, from the back side there, you can see a bunch of the bolts sticking out, holding on the steel plates. And uh, what I decided to do was just sort of use some scrap bits of wood just to build a bit of a mount that I can attach the, the whole thing to so I don't have to hold it while I'm running it. And then I just use some clamps to hold the, uh, the mill and the, uh, and the angle grinder to that little mount there. And that just makes it easier for me to, to feed it and turn it on and not have it vibrating all over the place. Uh, okay, so just to recap on what materials you're going to need for this build, uh, I suggest getting some 3 8 inch chain, usually sold by the foot. Um, that'll give you a whole bunch of different lengths, so once the chain pieces wear out, you can replace them. You're going to need two 2 inch wide fender washers. You're going to need a 5 8 inch coupling nut, a 5 8 inch bolt that is 2 inches in length. This is you're gonna actually going to cut down in size. You need a 5 8 inch nylon lock nut as well. And all those components are to make the actual crush crushing component that spins around inside the mill. Now for the crusher housing, you're gonna have to find some sort of steel pot. Uh, I recommend getting something that is, is between six and six and a half inches in diameter and at least two and a half inches deep. Um, I bought one new from the store, but hopefully you can find something either at home that you can use or something from a thrift store or uh, somebody, in somebody's trash. Uh, you're gonna need a three foot long piece of quarter inch threaded bar and four lock nuts and four wing nuts to go with it. This is to squeeze all of the housing and all the pieces together. You're also gonna need two washers with a three quarter inch center and one rubber washer with a three quarter inch center, which of course you could always cut with an X-Acto knife like I did if you can't find one that's big enough. And these washers are basically to act as a spacer between the back of the crusher housing and your angle grinder. And exactly how many washers you need will probably depend on the size and shape of your uh, angle grinder. So you might have to do some measuring there and make some adjustments. Uh, you're gonna need some plywood. I recommend at least half an inch thick, uh, half an inch or three quarter inch is all good. Um, you just make the two stiff pieces for the two ends of your housing of the uh, crusher. You need a steel baking tray. I just picked one up for a couple bucks at a thrift store. Um, this you're gonna actually gonna cut out the inside part of the lid that will go on the uh, inside of the crusher so that way you don't have rocks slamming against the wood. You're gonna need some sort of felt chamois or a rubber seal. Uh, this is to make like a sort of a dust proof seal uh, around the lid so you don't have a bunch of dust and, and small bits of crushed rock flying out. You're gonna need some PVC elbows, uh, two one and a quarter inch street elbows and one one and a quarter inch regular PVC elbow. This is to make the inlet and the outlet ports. Uh, you're gonna need two steel angle brackets. Uh, I used inch and a half because that's what fit really well with my angle grinder. You might need to get ones that are a little bigger than that and uh, two 5 16 steel bolts with nuts. Uh, this is to attach those angle brackets onto the angle grinder using the holes in your angle grinder that are already there typically to screw in the handle. Uh, mine happen to be 5 16 Yours might be different depending on the uh, angle grinder that you get, so make sure you check that. Uh, you're gonna need some flat steel bar, uh, typically like a three foot piece should be fine, that is 1 8 inch thick. Um, I used steel bar that was 3 quarter inches wide uh, I recommend getting one that is one inch wide so you don't have to do as much cutting and also don't have to drill as many holes, uh, which is pretty time consuming. So uh, save yourself a bit of time and, and use a bar that is one inch wide. Uh, and then you're also going to need some short bolts and lock nuts to attach all those little um, pieces of steel bar that you cut 
to the inside of your mill. Uh, I used bolts that were um, 10, 30 seconds in, in diameter. Um, I think they're probably only about an inch long. Uh, you're gonna, how many you're going to need is going to depend on how many little steel bars you end up cutting is you're going to need two for each. And uh, my total cost on this, pretty much depending on uh, whether or not you have to buy a brand new steel pot and, and butcher it or whether you can find a used one or one in the trash, uh, somewhere between 47 and $70 Canadian, which U.S. is probably going to be just under 40 bucks uh, up to maybe 60 bucks U.S. So uh, pretty cheap, certainly a lot cheaper than um, the ones that I've seen on the internet that are between 200 and $400. So uh, definitely a great way to save some money and crush some rocks. And the good thing is about this is that you can actually replace uh, the inside uh, steel flat bar pieces as they wear out and replace the chains versus the ones that you buy online that don't have any sort of uh, replaceable liners. You basically have to spend another two to $400 every time they wear out. So uh, yeah, that's my build. Thanks for watching. Uh, please leave some comments if uh, you've got any suggestions on how I can improve this or uh, any questions on, on how I built it and I'd be happy to get back to you. Hope you enjoyed the video.